Hello everyone, welcome back to the Geek Plant and another video during the 31 days of Halloween here on the channel. And it is October 13th, so what better review to do today than the original Friday the 13th from 1980. Now, a little history with myself from Friday the 13th. I didn't see the first one first, I actually saw part three first. I didn't see uh, part one until a couple years later when I was at a friend's house at an overnight in the basement. It was dark, it was scary. And I love this movie so much after I saw it. It scared me. It has a really creepy like atmosphere to it. The music is great. And it kind of sets up this just really creepy vibe that really kind of got to me as a kid. And it still gives me those like like feels from when I was a kid back then. The little goosebumps here and there for some of the creepy scenarios that are set up. And some specific scenes that we'll talk about during the review. But um, I love this movie so much. I love this franchise. I know I talk about Halloween and the Halloween franchise all the time. And I do a, a lot of stuff on that. But Friday the 13th is my second favorite franchise right under Halloween. And I actually do have the new box set from Shout Factory. The Scream Factory box set uh, that's coming out. I'll be getting that in a couple days. I'll actually do an unboxing of that. And show you guys the artwork on the box. And kind of go through the artwork on each one of the discs. And show you guys a little bit more about that box set. Because it's still available right now on Amazon.com. And it's actually on sale. So I'll drop the link in the description. So if you guys want to get it. It's definitely the best time to get it right now. So now let's get into the review. The original Friday the 13th came out in 1980. And was directed by Sean Cunningham. Uh, with an idea of let's do a scary movie kind of a thing. And... You know, they, they put like ads out in like the press releases in Hollywood and like the Hollywood Reporter and things like that about talking about the scariest movie ever made. And they didn't even have a script yet. So they wrote it. They brought in Tom Savini. He can pull up in his car and all this cool stuff with effects. And the effects are really good in the film. And you'll go through and you'll kind of see a few familiar faces in it. Uh, the one big uh, standout is uh, Kevin Bacon. Of course, people know him. I believe this was his first role. Um, he does a good job in the role. The cast is really well cast. They all gel really well. The chemistry works really well. And of course, the standout in this movie is Betsy Palmer as Mrs. Voorhees because her performance in this movie is just phenomenal. It is one of my favorite performances in all of horror today. It's just still holds up. It just really works well. And you can tell she's crazy. Like she plays this role perfectly well the whole killer mommy killer like that whole thing it's just great and of course that came that's where the, the famous k k ma 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 came from it was kill killer mommy he took the k from kill and ma from mommy because a lot of people get it wrong when they when they like make the noises or the sounds from the movie they say ch ch ha ha ha. it's actually k k ma ma ma. it's in the, it's in the making the behind the scenes i love the theme it works really well the rest of the score that kind of like that low kind of you know, bass kind of score to it to kind of like get you in that like, hey, there's something wrong here kind of thing. It just works really well. Uh, Crazy Ralph is great. Uh, Walt Gorney did a great job in that role as well. I love Crazy Ralph. He comes back for a couple more uh, appearances in the franchise as well. I'm actually considering making a list of the Friday the 13th films in order. Uh, my least favorite to my, my most favorite. It might be out later today, but I have a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to try to get it out by the end of the day. If not, you will see it before the month's over. You will also see a Halloween franchise list ranked by me as well. So keep an eye out for those videos too. Like I said, the Friday the 13th franchise is my second favorite horror franchise of all time. I love Jason. I love Jason's kills as the as the films go on, but I will always love the original. I think Betsy Palmer as Mrs. Voorhees is one of my favorite horror villains of all time. She's fantastic. So basically the premise of the film is we find out later that uh, back in the 50s, a little boy drowned because counselors were off having sex and they weren't watching him. So after that happens, uh, Mrs. Voorhees goes on a killing spree. She kills some kids. They shut down the camp. They keep trying to reopen it over the years and things start happening. People disappear. Uh, you know, cabins are set on fire, the water's bad, uh, different things that have jinxed the camp. So people basically in town think it's cursed. We start out with Annie after the initial intro from the original camp uh, that was running back when Jason died, when the two counselors were killed in the very beginning. Then we, then we pick up with Annie and she is coming into the town. She's looking for Camp Crystal Lake. Like the townspeople give this weird look like, why do you want to go out there? It's cursed and stuff. And then they run into Crazy Ralph on the way out. There's a trucker that gives her a ride halfway to the camp. Uh, after they run into Crazy Ralph and he spouts off his, you're all doomed. I, I can't do that the best impression. I might even play it like real quickly here so you can see it. You'll never come back again. It's got a death curse. You're doomed if you stay here. And then uh, the trucker guy takes her like halfway. He starts telling her the same stuff about the camp being cursed. And she's like, come on, it's just a camp. So he, he drops Annie off and uh, she makes her way to the rest of the way to the camp. Then we meet the rest of our, our cast coming to the camp. Counselors hired by Steve Christie to restart this camp and get it going again. So basically the premise is we are following these counselors 
on their journey as they are picked off one by one by Mrs. Voorhees. And of course, we don't know the killer is Mrs. Voorhees until the very end. And of course, when you first see the film and Aunt Alice runs out of the cabin after she finds out everybody is dead, she runs into Betsy Palmer in her loving arms and you're like, okay, this person's killer to save her from the killer and maybe we'll figure out who the killer is. And then you figure out it's actually Pamela Voorhees herself which was a kind of an out of the blue kind of a thing for me. I didn't think it was going to be her. I thought it was going to be like Jason as a boy or some other person that was trying to shut down the camp. It just really worked and it came out of nowhere in my opinion. Of course, seeing it when I was like 10 or 11, it was just like, whoa, I never seen anything like that before. The killer's a sweet lady that wants to like give you a hug. Yeah, that's her. Oh crap, crap that sucks. Now you got to keep out an eye out for everybody. Maybe anybody can be a killer. So, you know, going forward in horror films, I'm like, well, I don't know who's going to be the killer. After watching that and other films, I'm like, okay, who is it? So it kind of gave me that going forward. But um, it's a really well done movie. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. The score by Henry Manfredini is spectacular and still ranks up there with John Carpenter's Halloween and some other classic scores as well, like Psycho and some other great scores in horror cinema as well. Um, he does such a great job. Tom Savini. Uh, special effects in this movie still hold up. They really do. Of course, there's a few things you can see here and there. The Kevin Bacon kill is fantastic with the arrow through the neck and the blood spurting through, which was an accident, by the way, and it made it look so much better. But it's really well done. Uh, some of the kills are, of course, off screen, but we do see the bodies at the end with, that are all mangled up. By the way, I am reviewing the uncut version of the film. So if you guys haven't seen that one, I recommend seeing it because you see a few more shots of like bodies that have been uh, mutilated by Mrs. Voorhees that you don't see in the theatrical one. So I definitely recommend that because I think it's a better cut of the film. Sean Cunningham was the director. Uh, Victor Miller uh, wrote it and also Ron Kurtz was uncredited, but he was also a writer on the film. Sean Cunningham did a really good job setting up the shots and there were some really great creepy atmosphere shots. Uh, there's one scene in particular that always comes to mind when I think about this movie. When Brenda goes into the wash house like after Marcy is already dead and we know that the killer came from the showers back there where you know they're looking at the sink they're brushing their teeth and off to the side there you can see the showers down at the other end of the cabin and there's a shot in that cabin where they look like Brenda's not looking there at the moment she's looking in the mirror brushing her teeth but we see like a hand grab the like that's grabbing onto the shower curtain kind of let go and like go back behind so there's just this little vibe of like hey there's somebody there she's in danger and that shot and the music with it just sets up and cements how well done this movie is and how much of a great atmosphere it creates and how much the music really helps that atmosphere and it, it kind of gives you the willies and it makes you think nobody's safe at any time Kudos to the directing, the special effects, the music, everything I've talked about already. The acting, like I said, the uh, characters Alice, uh, Marcy, Annie, Jack, Bill, Brenda, Ned, uh, Steve Christie as well, Crazy Ralph. Everybody did a really great job. The chemistry was really well done. You, you believed that these kids were there, that they were like, you know, just there to have a good time, even though they're helping get the camp together. They just want to have fun. I'm going to give this movie an absolute thumbs up. Huge thumbs up. I'm really not rating these films during the uh, 31 Days of Halloween, but if I had to give it a score, I'd probably give it an 8.5 out of 10, but I really don't want to do a score. So I'm just kind of doing thumbs ups on these videos right now. So I love this film. Uh, if you're a horror fan and you've never seen this movie, but you've been heard about it over the years, or you're somebody who's just getting into horror and never seen it, I definitely recommend checking this one out. And I think you should watch this one before you watch any of the other Friday the 13th films, because in my opinion, this is still the best. Hope you guys enjoyed this review of Friday the 13th, the original from 1980. Uh, the uncut version is the one I reviewed. And I hope you guys are also enjoying all the content we were releasing here on the 31 Days of Halloween here on the Geek Blend. I do really enjoy making these videos, and I've had a great time during the month, and there's a lot more to come, so stay tuned. Uh, leave a like on the video. It really does help us out. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see and you want to see some more, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications so you can stay up to date on everything we do here on the Geek Blend, including all the new videos during the 31 Days of Halloween here in October. Also, link in the description for our social media, our Discord, and all the ways you can support the channel. You can do one-time donations, you can do Patreon, subscribe star for monthly donations. It really does help the channel out. It helps us bring you guys better content over time and helps us get better equipment over time as well. And I want to say thank you to all our current channel supporters. Your names will either be scrolling below me and at the end in the outro video, but you will see them uh, somewhere in the video. And I want to say thank you guys very much. I appreciate everything you do for the channel. Our next watch party is this Thursday. We'll be watching Killer Clowns from Outer Space and then playing trivia afterwards. So keep an eye out for that. 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on Thursday night here on the Geek Blend. 
Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys there and all the other live streams we have going on, including our Star Trek watch party tonight, and of course the Raging Geek Jedi show this Saturday night. Hopefully we'll see you guys in the chat on those shows. Hope you guys are having a great October. I'm Jeff, this is the Geek Blend, and remember, if you geek about it, we speak about it. We'll see you guys next time. Happy Halloween.